Ah, welcome to Keys to Success, which is live on the Think Tech live streaming network series, weekly on Thursdays at 11 a.m. We are your hosts. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. And I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. Welcome to today's show. The goal of this show is to provide professional and personal development tools and profound insights on how to achieve success in life, career, and or business. Vanessa Perez, CEO of S3 Career Consulting, was our guest on our last show, and her words of wisdom can be accessed on Newman Consulting Services' website, newmanconsultingservices.com, or our landing page, danelia.org. More than 59% of Honolulu renters are spending more than 30% of their household income on rent. According to Pacific Business News' latest published information, Honolulu ranked as the number 11 most expensive city in the nation, based on research done by Zumper, a national rent report. One-bedroom apartments in Honolulu jumped 2.9% from 2015 to $1,750, while the price of a two-bedroom apartment surged from 7.2% to $2,390 from the year ago. Hence our topic today, purchasing or selling real estate successfully. Joining us today to speak to us about how to successfully purchase or sell a home are our guests, Tiffany Staten, realtor and uh, from, uh, forgive me. Locations. For, forgive me. Realtor uh, associate from Locations LLC, Diamond Head office. And Stephen Kent, lender of uh, Honolulu Home Loans. Mahalo for joining us today. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for having us. Appreciate it. All right. When we start talking about buying and selling homes, it just ups that's a lot of money that we're going to have to do. <laughs> so, so it just throws me off here a we, bit. Okay? We get excited yeah. talking okay. about it. Okay. <laughs> so if you would briefly share with our viewers, you know, what prompted you to become a, a realtor and also, Stefan, what prompted you to become a loan officer? Well, interestingly enough, my, my parents are from North Carolina, mm -hmm. and they were sharecroppers in the South. That's not that long ago. My mm -hmm. mom's only 65 years old. And after the Vietnam War, um, for my uncles and for my family members that actually used those VA benefits, it prompted them to own real estate. Mm -hmm. And through life, it changed the game where we were able to maybe travel more, go to yeah. good schools, and just have more stability and stay in the same neighborhood. So. It's that passion, especially with our veterans, that I'd love to um, share with them on how they can start building wealth for themselves now, because oh, it's the wow. absolute best benefits. Right. Beautiful. Well, humanitarian. I love it. That's yeah, and it's, uh, you know, you're going to see that's a common uh, thread for a lot of folks in this industry. We, we've, uh, we've seen how real estate can really empower people. Mm -hmm. Myself, um, you know, we, I come from an immigrant family, and my father, when, when he was finally able to um, buy a home, put me in front of this house and said, you know, seven years old, eight years mm -hmm. old, and said, should we buy this? Mm -hmm. And over the course of time, I had now seen not only what, you know, how our family has changed yes. and grown and been, been able to accomplish because yes. we own real estate. Yes. Um, you know, it's really empowering. It's, it's something that you want to kind of give back. Oh, wow. yes. um, and, and the thing is, uh, I'm a veteran myself, 27 years retired Air Force, and uh, it's a wonderful thing to be a homeowner. You know, and I came from humble beginnings as well, mm -hmm. as well as Danilia. Mm -hmm. So we can relate to that. Yes. Yeah. All right. So what are the pros and cons of buying or selling property in Hawaii? Would you like to first talk about the um, lending side? Um, so uh, everybody knows that, that property in, in Hawaii is, is mm -hmm. not cheap. Yes. Okay? Oh, yes. Um, and so, you know, the, the lending side becomes that much more important mm -hmm. uh, because of the price points are higher mm -hmm. and you're trying to fill in a gap and that's really where kind of my job is, is to help you get there, get mm -hmm. to your goal, get to that price point. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's the, probably the, if we're talking about cons, the hardest part is the, the higher price point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The pro is, is the fact that, you know, property does appreciate, you know, mm -hmm. uh, versus renting where all of a sudden that money's not going anywhere mm -hmm. except for some to pay somebody else's mortgage. Right. Um, you're actually in some ways benefiting yourself, and Tiffany mm -hmm. could talk about this a, a little bit, a little bit yes. better. Yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to um, with a home, you're you're going to see that money back. Mm -hmm. It's going to appreciate. You know, someday you could rent it out. Mm -hmm. All right. And I would say the you know the, the the con is finding out where to get the best information mm -hmm. because we have such a unique market. Mm -hmm. We only have about 
90 zip codes, but about 400 neighborhoods yes. on Oahu alone. Wow. So, true. so from block to block, um, if someone were to say, I need to do my research first, well, they'd be researching a very yeah, long time, cool. and their first most and most important step would still be starting a plan with someone like Stefan and figuring out what they can afford first. Yeah. And right. then we figure out what's the best neighborhood for you, right. what does it look like, where to go to school, so on and so forth. Yeah, mm -hmm. people have a lot of fear about making that jump into purchasing real estate. I remember the first house we we bought, you know, there was a little bit of trepidation there, a little bit of fear, but we just believed that it was the right thing to do and we just felt we're going to go for it and we've been doing that ever since. So we've had, we've bought several real estate properties and uh, it, it's made a big difference towards retirement, I'll tell you that. And we have the highest appreciation rate of real estate anywhere in the country. We have the highest concentration, mm -hmm. about 6.33% since 1975. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, say Washington DC is one of the only markets that beats us out at 7%, mm -hmm. but then somewhere like California, mm -hmm. they also have 6% appreciation, yes. but California is very large, oh, so yeah. it doesn't truly tell the story. Yes. So again, if you're setting up that plan for retirement, yeah. this is definitely the way to go as a real yeah. estate. There's also like the, you know, if you look at historically, um, it's also the, the volatility is another part of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, what did the market look like in 2008 versus, yes. you know, versus other parts of this country? Mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, because we have such a limited amount of land, mm -hmm. uh, uh, prices, you know, were, were insulated from, you know, the, the greater market effects, mm -hmm. while <coughs> some places in, in the country really mm -hmm. suffered. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the, uh, one of the other pros of mm -hmm. having this. this uh, and, and one of the, the key things uh, that we, while well, we have you here today, is behavior is taught. You know, everybody wants things, but they really don't know how to do it. And you guys are on the cutting edge. You're going to share with them how to. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, uh, when you think about buying a home, that's one of the, the most uh, important things or the most uh, costly things that you can do in your life. You know, your health is the, is the only thing you need to work, work on, but you need to have somewhere to stay. Mm -hmm. And we look at that too. Right. So why should a person buy versus rent? I know you touched on that uh, earlier, but can, you know, I'd like to get the, your take from both of you. I think um, from a very simple standpoint, it's just math. <laughs> it's it's very it. simple. Two thousand dollars a month turns into twenty four hundred a year. Might as well round it off to twenty five. Yeah, yeah. And in four years, that's a hundred grand. And mm -hmm. a lot of the homes that people are living in, even aren't worth that every you know ten years. So it's just math for one. Right. And that's, that's well, say, what, say that one more time. Yeah. Say one more it's time. just mad. Oh, I love it. I love it. But what about, you know, somebody saying, well, I can't come up with that down payment. So how would they deal with that? There's, there's some excellent uh, programs out there, particularly for first-time buyers. Mm -hmm. So um, there are 0% down programs. Mm -hmm. You're kidding. The VA, as you know, mm -hmm. also has the uh, uh, Rural Development USDA loan as well, mm -hmm. um, where large parts of this island uh, you can do 0% down. Mm -hmm. Um, on the conventional side, even if you're in town, mm -hmm. you can do go as low as 3% mm -hmm. um, with, uh, with a conventional loan program. Mm -hmm. 3%, let's say, for a modest condo, um, you know, we're talking about $10,000, $12,000. Mm -hmm. that's, that's pretty achievable, or mm -hmm. even you can get a gift from a family member. There are right. other ways of, of mm -hmm. making that happen, right. um, but it's not, you know, some people think that, oh, it's 20%, I right. gotta get to 20 and, and that all of a sudden that number becomes so looming. And One of the, the things that we teach on this program is, you know, we as, in, as human beings keep coming up with blocks. We want something, right. but we put up a block. And the, one of the reasons we do this show is, yes, you'll come up with a block, but let's work around that block. Find other ways, you know, contact individuals like yourself. Find out what you can do. Don't just right. say, there's well, I've got to come up with 20% yeah. down, so there's no way I can afford mm -hmm. this. Yeah. Well, if you're paying rent, you can afford to buy. That's right. it. And there's and never going to be a perfect time to that's buy. That's right. Ever. Right. So That's true. What we're here to do is help coach you. It's just yes. like anything else. So <laughs> if you'd like to be a pro athlete, if you'd like to be um, disciplined in learning another language, because yes. this is essentially another language as well. It's going to yes. take different habits, and yes. we're going to coach you on how to get there. But the first and most important step would be sitting yes. with myself and yes. Stefan mm -hmm. and developing a plan that is specific to you and your family, because yes. everyone's situation is different. Correct. But mm -hmm. when they sit down and they say, well, how much was your interest rate? Right. What happened when you bought? What happened right. when you bought? And all that right. can be very confusing. So sitting down specifically and looking at your right. situation. And uh, the thing that you, you, you spoke of earlier, 
It's math. You know, uh, if there's a misconception when we, when we speak to each other, when we talk, you know, the verbal uh, understanding. But there is no misconception when you look at numbers. You know, two and two is going to be four right. if you're in Germany or China or here in Hawaii. So when you said math, that's a key. When people sit down and they crunch the numbers, so to speak, that really gives them a, a, a Nissan light, you know. They have an epiphany. They say, wow, I can. Mm -hmm. I can do it mm -hmm. if you just decide to do it, as you said. And you're here to coach them. So what are some of the items someone uh, should think about when purchasing or selling a, pro a property? First things first, first, to the first money. Thing, <laughs> the first thing uh, that you do is you talk to a lender. Um, and a lot of, a lot of people, have, there's certain uh, level of trepidation um, with like all of a sudden their entire lives are going to be exposed. It's, mm -hmm. it's not nearly that, that way. You know, it, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you need to know where you are so mm -hmm. that you can know your starting point mm -hmm. to get to your goal. You know, oftentimes um, I get, you know, I get into a, a meeting with folks and uh, they're, they've been afraid to talk about mm -hmm. any of these issues mm -hmm. for so long. Mm -hmm. And they could have been in a home already, yes. you know, a year ago when mm -hmm. the reality is let's, let's get you on your path. Even yeah. if you're not ready now, how do you know? Yes. You know, if you haven't actually talked to a professional yes. so that we can then get you where you need to be. Right. Yeah. And, and what are uh, some of the, the, the things that determines the the property that you want to purchase on on uh, how you should purchase it and, and and why I mean what should a person look at when they look at uh, buying or, or, or selling you know let's do buying first you know what are some of the things they should look at when they think um, about purchasing I would property? say primary drivers here in Hawaii especially because we have such a turnover in population mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ask yourself how long are you going to be here mm -hmm. okay. and really commit to it yes. <laughs> Yes. Have a plan. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing is, especially if you have small humans, mm -hmm. um, you're going to want to try and, and figure out a school system that works for yes. you. Oh, yeah. um, That's critical too. Um, figure out what you're comfortable with as far as a commute. Mm -hmm. um, some folks, it's very attractive to go to some of these rural USDA areas, but mm -hmm. then their, their lifestyle really doesn't afford them to mm -hmm. spend two hours in traffic. Yes. So you might get a little bit less mm -hmm. moving, say, closer to town, but you have to really have those conversations with your family yes. about what you're comfortable with and what you're actually going to do, because right. you want to ultimately be happy in the home. Right. Um, I think what's difficult here, especially in Hawaii, is again, we talk about how much can you get. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the reality, how much can you is, yeah, yeah. Okay. the reality is, is not that much. So, right. Say, for instance, uh, a one bedroom here, as long as it has a window, and a closet could be mm -hmm. 425 square feet. Right. Well, that's just the reality of our yes. market. But you have to start there first and say, you have that plan, I'm going to be here four years, and another four years, we'll upgrade. Mm -hmm. For most people, it takes two or three moves before they get to that single mm -hmm. family home, mm -hmm. and they'll and need right. help with lending first to, right. to figure that out. Right. right. So we're we going to take a short break. This is Keys to Success on Think Tech Live Streaming Network Series. We're talking with Tiffany Stadden, Realtor Associate from Locations LLC Diamond Head Office, and Stefan Kant, Lender from Honolulu Home Loans. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo, John Newman. We'll be back in a minute, so please stay tuned for more Keys to Success. Hi, this is uh, Jane Sugimura. I'm the co-host for Condo Insider. And we're on Think Tech Hawaii every Thursday at 3 o'clock. And we're here to talk about uh, condominium living and uh, issues that affect condominium residents and owners. And I hope you'll join us every week on Thursday. Aloha. Aloha. I am Reg Baker, and I am the host of Business in Hawaii with Reg Baker. We broadcast live every Thursday from 2 to 2.30 in the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. We highlight successful stories about businesses and individuals and learn their secrets to success. I hope you can join us on our next show on Thursday at 2 o'clock. Until then, aloha. Welcome back. This is Keys to Success on the ThinkTech live streaming network series. We encourage you to call our hotline at 415-871-2474 to join our conversation or tweet us at ThinkTechHI if you have any questions or comments. We've been talking with Tiffany Statton, Realtor Associate from Locations LLC Diamond Head Office and Stefan Kant, Lender from Selling Real Estate 
Sorry, Linda from Honolulu Home Loans about purchasing or selling real estate successfully. My name is Danelia, D-A-N-E-L-I-A. -E and I'm the other half of the duo with John Newman. Welcome back to the show. So, Tiffany, Stefan, welcome back as well. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We have somewhat of a signature question that we ask all of our, our uh, guests, but in this, in this uh, uh, opportunity, we'll, we'll just tweak it a wee bit. What we'd like to know is share with us your three top keys to pur purchasing or selling uh, a property, if you would. And, and I'd like to get the, the take from the both of you. Okay, I think... Through lending and yeah. through real estate. I think uh, the first one is first actually have a, a set goal and know where what you truly want to do. She, she talked about earlier um, about being very clear on what you're looking for. Mm. Okay. I think if you need to start there, it's actually what do I want at the end of the day. And then the second one is talk to a lender. You know, mm -hmm. you, you need, the lender is going to give, empower you and facilitate the entire transaction. Mm -hmm. um, and the financial component is so important that if you don't know where you are, how are you going to get to that home purchase? Mm -hmm. And three? Um, thir get an awesome agent. Yeah, right. <laughs> get to, get Tiffany. Uh, don't be shy. Go ahead. That's, that's why we're here. Well, well, somebody who cares about you. Yeah. Well, there's, at any given moment, there's about 150,000 realtors yeah. in Hawaii. Oh, wow. Wow. We have the highest per capita of any population wow. of realtors. Part of it is because of the price point. So mm -hmm. if you talk to anyone national average, the, av the average person knows about 10 realtors. Mm -hmm. Here in Hawaii, we know about 18. Mm -hmm. So you gotta go through uncle, auntie, everyone, yes, right. and say, oh, they've had their license for how many years? Yes. Mm -hmm. But only about 9% of realtors do more than nine transactions per year. Mm -hmm. um, and at locations, just generally speaking, as far as our company, the average new agent will do eight transactions. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm not here to say that you know, I'm this amazing realtor. Right. I have amazing mentors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and same thing with, with Stefan. Mm -hmm. He has amazing mentors at Honolulu Home Loans. So right. getting the right team to help you first and foremost, yeah. okay. I would say is definitely one of the most important keys. That is critical, absolutely. And, and what would share with some others, if you would? Or is that the only one that you, well, that encompasses everything? Well, that, that like, like he said, they're going to help facilitate mm -hmm. the sale. So right. someone you like, someone you trust, but also someone who's a professional. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Someone who's willing to say, you know what, that's, that's a new area. I'm not quite sure of how those transactions work mm -hmm. with that type of sale, mm -hmm. but such and such agent does, and I'm going to sit down and have lunch with them and learn that process. Because okay. there's so many, again, with these different neighborhoods, mm -hmm. the homes mm -hmm. are so different right. and need that level of expertise. All right. Well, you know, the thing is, I, I, I could just speak from our personal experience. One of the things John and I always did was that we, when we decided that we were, we, we just always decided we were going to purchase real estate. We decided that we were going to do very little renting, you know, if we could, because we started early and even though it was very, very challenging because of money back in the, you know, younger days, uh, we just decided we were going to take that leap and buy something and then next thing you know you're kind of growing out of that you buy another place you buy another place and you keep your places and you're renting them and then pretty soon you're able to retire off off the rentals you know because those places get paid off and everything so you know we we strong when we look at millennials um today they're waiting longer and longer to really do things like investing and having children and everything but we can only encourage you to start early because even though you think you can't afford it you actually can find a way if you right. meet with somebody and you sit down and do that so the latest trend in honolulu living is right sizing more couples are selling their larger homes in favor of condos in downtown honolulu so what are the pros and cons of this uh it's uh <laughs> They, they don't have to fix roofs, they don't yeah, have to cut gra grass. A lot, of, a lot of that is a lifestyle choice. They yes. want to be closer to shopping centers and mm -hmm. they, want to, you know, they, uh, they don't want to maintain a home yes. um, for whatever reasons, whether it's you know, easier to move, you know, it's not as easy to move around or they're just tired of it. You know? right. um, it's also, there's, there's a, a lot of the um, appreciation you're seeing right now, you know, those areas are, are really growing. And so, so yes. some of that is also a financial play as well. Yes. Um, so that, those are the major reasons is the financial uh, concept and then just lifestyle choices. Right, Go right. into the urban quarter, get away from, you know, 
Well, well you know, we, John and I had never lived in a condo before and we, we, moved, we bought a condo and moved into Honolulu and we've never regretted it. We downsize and it's amazing how you start realizing that you really don't need all that stuff. You know, just yeah. simple living, even in a condo, we, we laugh because, you know, John will be calling me at one end of the condo and, and he can't hear me say anything and we still lose each other in the condo. So, you know, <laughs> it's like you, you just, and you don't, you have your weekends to yourself. You don't have to mow grass, you don't have to take care of the yard, you know, all the, all the amenities are there. It's just wonderful. Yeah. And you, you spoke earlier about uh, numbers. I, I like numbers because they don't lie. And when we, when we talked about the, the pros and cons of buying and selling, you know, why, if you can pay rent, you can buy. Mm -hmm. You no, might not be able to buy that penthouse, but you can buy. It's a stepping stone, as you said. Mm -hmm. Buy what you can afford right now, and that will help you because mm -hmm. it can't do anything but appreciate. Right. Mm -hmm. Correct. You know? And as it appreciates, you move to something better, and you move to something bigger. Or you scale down, as Anelia said. We have big house, and my weekends was cutting grass and cleaning out gutters. Mm -hmm. So we changed that. Mm -hmm. So what, is, what, what, what would you think the most valuable lesson that each of you have learned in the journey of becoming a, a realtor and a, a loan? Um, I think for me, the most valuable lesson is deep down, everyone wants this. Everyone uh. wants to own. And when I hand the keys out to the family, it's usually the small humans that grab the keys first. Because they're like, I can finally put holes in the wall. I can finally hang up a poster. I can finally personalize this place. And I know that I can play with the same friends. And I'm going to go with the same kids to school. And that's what it's really all about. Is, you know, even for me growing up, um, my neighbors, we were so close. My dad and my, and my we called them Uncle Nick. They were this wonderful family next door mm -hmm. and that's what this is really about is giving yourself stability not just financially but also just just lifestyle just giving yourself that's stability. a really good point because children need that stability and if you, you're moving from home to home to home um, that can be challenging for them you know but when you actually buy and they think this is our home I mean that really makes a big difference so you know one of the questions that we really wanted to ask you guys was when it comes to selling a property, sometimes a person upgrades their property to a point that they can't recoup the money and you know they use to upgrade it. And I think this is a critical point because a lot of people don't know how to sell their property and how much money they need to put into it before they go to sell it. So what's the rule of thumb on that? And the mindset that they should have right. when, they, when they go about it. Right. Please contact your lender first yeah. and <laughs> contact your realtor throughout, yeah. throughout home ownership because mm -hmm. Things change quarter by quarter, mm -hmm. things change year by year. And what I love about locations is first and foremost, we were, we were locations and research since mm -hmm. 1969. Mm -hmm. So we have these wonderful tools where we're able to go back and see a legacy of what mm -hmm. neighborhoods have done by house type and by condo type. Mm -hmm. So you really don't want to over improve mm -hmm. past a certain point. Mm -hmm. You want to have enough curb appeal, but you mm -hmm. certainly are not going to recoup mm -hmm pretty fixtures and pretty countertops. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Um, the, the, a big part of that is, uh, I always say, I'm not just your loan officer uh, for this transaction, mm -hmm. right? Like this is also, I'm here for you after you've closed mm -hmm. to help answer any questions and talk about any kind of issues you're, you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with an agent. You know, mm -hmm. it's, uh, we're here for you and your family in whatever capacity mm -hmm. you need us. Mm -hmm. And if you have questions even further down the line about tax assessed value mm -hmm. or um, you know, the, any uh, change, changes you want to make to your property, mm -hmm. have the conversation. It's free. I mean, mm -hmm. we, we don't charge anything for those conversations. Mm -hmm. so. so what I'm hearing you say is that once, it's not one-stop shopping. I mean, when you help a person, you're there for that right. person throughout. When, if they decide to sell, they need to contact you. Right. If they decide to upgrade, they need to contact you. And you could shepherd them through every stage that they would like yeah. to, to walk through. Correct. You know, we have some younger friends and uh, they've been renting all of their lives and they were very comfortable just renting, you know, for the rest of their lives. And when we, we sat down with them and said, look, you have to buy. Not only, not only will you have a home for yourself and your children and your child, but not only that, but the tax savings and, I mean, everything associated with buying a piece of real estate. Even if your real estate goes down, it will eventually go up after a few years. So, you know, you, you can afford it. If you're affording rent now, you can afford to buy. They ended up um, buying. 
They were so thrilled with the results of buying. They saw the tax savings, all the benefits that they ended up buying across the street, and now they've converted across the street to two rentals. So now they actually see that they could retire and have residual income coming in. I mean, it's But the only the thing that they didn't, the light didn't come on until they did exactly what you said from right. day one. You have to do the math. Mm -hmm. Once you look at the numbers and they saw how much money they gave away mm -hmm. renting, because they could only right. take their suitcases when they left. Mm -hmm. If they had put that money, the, three, the five years that they had rented, they would have bought a home. Mm -hmm. I mean, bought not just get it, they would have paid the home off. Mm -hmm. They were paying a solvent amount of rent. Mm -hmm. right. And when we, when we talked to them, I mean, the, the, the wife really loved the property. I mean, she fell in love with a rental. Right. So her husband couldn't share with her to move because that was her wonderful spot mm -hmm. right. until we sat down and crushed the numbers. Right. And that light came on. It takes mm -hmm. discipline. It does. It, you're going to be very uncomfortable. Yes. I can promise you when we're shopping, you're not going to like that first house. Right. I'm going to tell you it's going to be full of termites, mold, mm -hmm. your family's going to talk about you, but I tell you what, in a couple of years when you're able to upgrade mm -hmm. and whether you're, whether you're single, whether you're married, whatever your familial state is, yes. someone will tell you, oh, wait until this, wait right. until that. Mm -hmm. If you're paying rent, you're paying someone else's bills. Right, right. So you might as well put your money in your own yeah. pocket because your rent will stay the same. Yes. Oh, well, your rent will go up, but your, your mortgage payment will stay the same. So okay. we're out of time. We'll have to wrap it up. John, would you like to share your uh, quote of the day? Yes, I would. The quote comes from Will Rogers today. It says, even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. Okay, Tiffany and Kent's words of wisdom with regards to keys to success can be found on Newman Consulting Services webpage, newmanconsultingservices.com, and landing page danelia.org. Thank you so much, Thank Tiffany you. and Thank Stefan, you. for joining us today and sharing your insights to the keys to success on how to purchase and sell real estate successfully. Keys to success will return next Thursday at 11 a.m. We ask that you please tune in and ask your family and friends to do so as well. We'd like to thank you all. Aloha. Aloha.